Hey guys, it's Mountain Monday, so you know what to do. Breathe in and out and breathe in and out. All right, so you might notice by the title of this video, I'm going to talk about something I discovered last week. I don't know when it happened. I won't see when it happened because I have no idea. I just know it happened at some point and I discovered it last week. And that is that Ben Kuchera, the editor that edited the piece I wrote for Polygon that got me dogpiled for three days and originally drew the ire of Gamergate against me, blocked me. And I have no idea why. I've never exchanged a harsh word with the guy. Um, he got a little prickly with me when I started getting dogpiled and started engaging with people. He said, if you're going to respond and tag. But then a few weeks later, I got an email from him saying, "It's hey, it's rough out there. I hope you're okay. Oh, that was the last I heard from him. And now I'm blocked. And I have no idea why. And this is one of these unfortunate, frustrating things that happens in any work environment, not just games, but you know, in, in, in the age of social media, when you have a colleague, not necessarily a coworker, but somebody in the same industry as you, um, who you thought everything was okay with and you suddenly get uh, friction, you're like, well, what do I do? And this is the point where you have to, um, decide whether it's worth a face full of garbage to reach out and find what's going on. And I mean, I don't think there's anything more lame than writing someone and going, hey, why you block me? Like, it's just, it's, it's immaterial in the grand scheme of things. It really is. Um, but it, it, it's a lot sadder for me than I thought it was going to be just because it's so unnecessary. I mean, if if he doesn't want to see the people that talk to me, just don't follow me. It doesn't appear on the timeline that way. Blocking is a pretty extreme step. And people are like, oh, it's because you're on the block bot or this or that. But this is precisely why professionals shouldn't be using these block bots in not any block bot, just these block bots. And it's really funny because I originally pitched to Polygon and, and got rejected a few times. And I tried again because there was a rumor going around that anybody who was a part of, of something and something, uh, this was around, you know, August of 2014, anybody discussing um, Gamergate was automatically getting blocked. Um, I believe this might have before it was actually called Gamergate even. And I'm like, well, that's odd. You know, I'm so I, I thought I'd, I'd message and say, hey, about that piece. And I ironically, it's like, okay, let's talk. And we did the mental illness piece and the whole thing. And I thought it was really great. And it was a good piece. And the thing is, because we worked on that, Ben knows something of who I am as a person and I know something of him as a person. And he's actually a really good editor one-on-one. -on -one. And that's the sad thing because a lot of people just have an impression of him, not even from his Twitter feed itself, from snippets of his Twitter feed put on various message boards. And I, I'm sure everyone can kind of agree that who a person is on social network, especially something like Twitter, some people are just not very good um, in, in 140 characters. And some people are great in some circumstances and not great in others. People are complex. Um, and the, the tricky thing with life, with people, especially when you associate with a lot of people and you have to for work purposes, is you have to decide with every individual you encounter whether you want to commit the effort and emotional capital required to um, per continue the relationship. And I just realized right now People are really big on proof on the internet. So just so you know, there, there you go. My Twitter feed, proof. I'm not making this up so that if, if somebody happens to see this and talk to him and he unblocks me or whatever, I'm not lying. Okay, guys, the first thing people like to do on the internet is call somebody a liar, especially when they have some sort of minor philosophical disagreement with them. It's either block or call you a liar. In this case, I got blocked. And so I don't want to get called a liar on top of it. 
And this is the part that makes me really sad. I don't think it's the specifics of the situation. It's that we exist in such a socially compromised environment on the internet right now. And this this isn't exclusive to gaming. And, and I think that's the problem is a lot of people think this is a, a thing that's unique to uh, gamers and people who talk about games even if you don't identify as a gamer uh if you can if you converse about games on the internet it, it applies to you and um i think it's very sad that this has that, that we've sort of collectively worn this because um when i worked in music programming um before we had all these social networks and people you know it was either email or the, the there were phone hotlines and people would phone in you know they were teenage girls at the time they'd phone in and insult the on-air hosts and the music channel i worked in and there it was nasty it was vicious nasty little 14 and 15 year olds if they were even that old and so you know i know because i have a breadth of experience and oh, oh boy talk radio was even worse and again it was at least in my case it was the women who were the most vicious they'd pick on everything from the sound of my voice to they would keep track of how many times I dared to interrupt my husband who was my my co-host as well and in talk radio you know there is a certain amount of interruption that's acceptable you just can't do what's called crosstalk which is talk over each other for a prolonged period of time uh, the, the most important thing is exciting dynamic radio and if if you're going to um, it's better to interrupt than have dead air. And sometimes you do have to interrupt because I was the one on the headset to the control room. So I was the one that knew when we were going to go to break. I was the one working the board. And so there was certain information that my husband was, was not privy to that I was. So I had to cut in. But whenever I did, it's like, oh, she's so rude. She's interrupting him so much. And I actually started calling them the Heathers from um, this uh, th that movie with Christian Slater and Winona Ryder back in the day. And I used to go on and say, and the Heathers are going to love this, and hello, Heathers, and things like that, because they'd spend the entire shift on Facebook just cutting me up. And so I know that this is not a new thing, and this is not something specific to gaming, and it's not something specific to, you know, uh, white male gamers because, you know, in, in my two um, previous incarnations in the media, the, those were women both times of various ages. And so I have, I have a greater perspective than, than some people in this industry. And it gets me into a lot of trouble because people get very upset when I don't get as upset as they do on, on certain situations. Now, does that mean I'm going to change? No, because... I like my way better. I like not being um, easily offended. I like being confident enough in myself to stand up for myself. And yes, that way is not always nice, but sometimes I am just tired and I want to tell a person where to go. That is my right as a content creator. People, people have to understand when you come to someone's YouTube channel and insult them. And a lot of people think, and it, it's funny, the way people will go, that was completely fair criticism. That was completely civil. And I'm like, no, that was friggin' offensive. And how do I know that it was offensive? Because I got freaking offended. And it's very subjective. And I'm aware of that. But I don't think, and that, that's why, you know, the whole tone policing thing came up. And that's a term I don't like using because it is a loaded term. But uh, I don't like it when people don't... Um, deal with the substance of my argument. They don't like the way I said it. And that's very, very frustrating because like I've said in previous videos, I do have a comedy background and sometimes you're saying things in the most entertaining way for the audience, not to be nice to the one heckler that uh, pissed you off in that moment. And so no, I won't be tone policed on my own YouTube channel because of that background and because, you know, if, if you find something I say not to your taste, you have absolutely the right to stop watching this channel and go somewhere else. I cannot possibly tailor my content to every single individual because there are thousands of people 
there's at least a thousand people that watch every given video. I cannot tailor make it to everyone. And I was just realizing today that, you know, in, in my world, and I, I live in a world of, of critical analysis a lot of the times because I have to take difficult concepts and make them simple for, you know, infotainment purposes. But, you know, like I said, people are not simple. And so I'll go through and say there are five statements someone makes. It could be in one source or multiple. And it's like, okay, that one's cool. That one's cool. That one's cool. That one's cool. You know, um, that fifth one, that's wacky. But hey, they said four things that I thought were good points. So overall, I think they made good points. And that's what I'm going to focus on. But for some odd reason, the internet has made every every person who has even a moderate amount of passion for an issue define themselves based on what they're against what they're opposed to and i determined some time ago that i was not going to do that that i didn't think that was uh mentally healthy for me and i didn't think it made me a good analyst to just oppose things all of the time there's a huge gulf in my mind between something I disagree with, something I find fuss frustrating, and something I think is actually harmful. And I think it's partially because I've actually seen things that are harmful, like assumptions and, and um, status quo thinking and, and systems that, that are um, exceptionally harmful. And uh, um, I guess that makes me weird as a feminist because I never went through that phase where everything was sexist. I, I always sort of had that analytical distance where it's like, no, you know, not all of it is. And uh, the, the other difficult thing in dealing with these social issues is that something someone said may not have the intent of being offensive, you know, of being sexist, even if, or, or racist or homophobic or transphobic or whatever, um, they don't have that intent. They don't know it's wrong. They're repeating something they've heard elsewhere that sounded good to them. And the worst thing you can do from an educational standpoint in those moments is to freak out on them because it doesn't teach them anything. They go off angry and it actually, um, it actually embeds the thinking in their head more, you know, because unfortunately a lot of people on the internet are just waiting to be rejected and that's very, very sad. But how does this dovetail into my original topic? Well, the thing that kind of makes me sad about, there's a lot of things that make me sad. One is that somebody in the same industry as me decided whether directly or through a bot to just block me without having a conversation first. Um, the other thing is that, you know, the, one of the things I supported about the, the idea of sort of the gaming left was this idea of uh, support for women, support for minorities. And I'm not, you, hear me out on this, okay, guys? Uh, and I'm not looking at this as me myself. I'm not saying I'm, I'm a woman from a personal perspective. I'm looking at this as if it happened to someone else. And it's one thing to say we support women in gaming. It's another thing to support individual women in gaming, not because you agree with them 100%, but because you want diversity of voices that don't necessarily agree with you. What's the point of having these diversity mandates if you have to agree with someone to support their right to speak. And by support, I mean active support, which means not shutting out their voice actively, like not actively blocking them. And if someone's being abusive, I mean, I know people swear at Ben Kachera all the time, and I totally understand why he'd like some quiet on, on his Twitter feed. But this is the problem with the particular block bots that are being designed. All you have to do is follow a certain number of people who are flagged and you get blocked too. And I don't even know who those people are. 
and there are some people there are some people I know are on the block list but I'm not going to unfollow them because every so often we do have sometimes I'm just wanting to see what they're saying because I disagree with them profoundly on a lot of things but it's good to see the other side uh, the other is that sometimes um, I have to communicate with these people privately, not because we're on the same side, but because there's something, there's, there's a, a temporary point of commonality in that someone is suicidal or they legitimately want to check something. They want to ask a question and I want to be available to help in those moments because if someone is suicidal, someone is suicidal, it doesn't matter what they believe what matters is is you get them out of crisis because nobody deserves to die over an internet fight. And I think that a lot of people have really lost perspective about what's been going on in video games of late. And the the extreme radical elements that happened especially early on to people like like Zoe Quinn uh, where people were, you know, nuisance calling her father. Um, take that out because that's a small percentage of what's been going on here. The rest of it is just a giant internet fight, right? Just a giant internet fight. And the substance of that internet fight has not been what's been driving the trolling. The opportunity to troll has been what's been driving the trolls. The sheer amount of undue attention this internet fight has gotten in the press. And it's really frustrating to me because I think I have um, something to offer in that, you know, it started off between me and Gamergate really rough. Like it started off all right at first and then an article that took three weeks to get published in Polygon dropped and everybody thought I was some sort of spy. And that was really weird to me because it, I didn't know before that how little people actually knew about how, how freelance journalism, especially freelance journalism and video games works. Um, and so, you know, it, it was, it was nasty for a while there, including a couple of death threats and, and some really nasty stuff. Like if somebody makes a, a rape reference at me, I just block them. If somebody told me that, you know, Hitler should have put you in an oven when I mentioned I'm Jewish, I'm going to block them. You know, that's the sort of thing where it's just like, that's just not even worth engaging with, you know. Um, but I don't get those very often and I don't think that's by accident, you know. Um, I, I do think that integrity does matter on the internet, even to trolls, because trolls do not have no code of ethics. Trolls have a very specific um, compass when it comes to who they're going to target and who they're going to troll and who they think are maximum lol cows. And that doesn't mean I think you should appease trolls or anything, because it's not about that. The more you try to appease the troll, the more a troll is going to troll. You just have to keep doing your thing and seem to have a shred of any sort of authenticity and you're not seen as an effective target because they won't get the big boom they're uh, looking for. And you'll get the low level trolls. You'll get the people who are new to the internet and think it's really funny to, you know, try to poke a hornet's nest. But when they don't get anywhere or worse, they get sort of logic or they find out that there's an actual human being there, they stop. And I think it's better to have a disagreement with someone than to silence someone personally. And, and that has gotten me put on block lists and, and gotten me, uh, you know, I guess the whole block thing, I guess what, what this says to me, it's a, it's a tangible example of the ostracization and blacklisting that's going on in the industry. And it's really funny because I was already sort of not one of the cool kids already because I wasn't on Game Journals Pro, right? Um, and I think it's sad that that, you know, went the way it did because I think that the vast majority of people on that list really um, weren't doing anything wrong with it. It was just, um, the, the reality is we can't get 
we can't be too friendly with developers because that's a conflict of interest and we can't be too friendly with the the public because the public doesn't trust journalists it's not that we can't be friends it's that people don't want to be our friend and it it's difficult dealing with with the public when you're a journalist because there's just certain things you can't do and there's certain things you can't talk about and there are certain situations where it's like i have to leave because me being here may compromise me in in these various ways and it becomes quite awkward and and you're less fun to hang out with and you know you can't just um you can't just do what you want and sort of look the other way on certain things that you don't want to cause a problem but you know your reputation is so critical that you, you do have to be that wet blanket sometimes and try to minimize it as much what you end up doing is leaving but if you leave too many times well you don't get invited places anymore do you and um it it can be pretty lonely and so i understand why these journalists did like a a support group it's a facebook group like anything else it's people of of like interests now some people did abuse it but that's not the same as they're being wrong with the list in general um but you know i i already wasn't a part of that list and so i was already not part of the elite and it's funny because now i know technically you know i write for a major gaming website on the escapist but my beat is cosplay right i'm still sort of not elite in gaming i'll occasionally get a piece approved on a freelance basis but i'm still not really writing about games for a major site and um i love what i do i love the cosplay show but in some ways it's still you know my nose pressed against the glass wanting to be a real boy like pinocchio i'm not really a real games journalist as people are so so eager to tell me that i'm not a real journalist um and so more and more i'm just like fine i'm not a journalist because you know you get rejection so often from so many people you're just like i don't need you i don't need your approval i'll go somewhere else because this is beating my head against the wall but you know what that means is people who actually are good at what they do um leave and we're not getting the best ideas we're not getting the best people the people are, are going elsewhere and doing things that make them more money and, and have less hassle and you know right now in gaming that's true of developers in some cases that's true of advertisers that's true of writers it's true of even you know people who otherwise would engage as fans but don't want the dog piling that happens if you happen to talk about a, a popular game and you whenever you criticize a prominent AAA title you're gonna get people angry at you just because you criticize that title and so it's weird we have this weird dichotomy now in video games that people should be able to handle criticism but franchises are protected from the very same criticism that actual flesh and blood people with with feelings are not immune to and that's a very strange double standard and sorry if there was a noise there i accidentally kicked my mic stand and so i guess the way the reason this whole block thing makes me sad not not on a personal level because i i tend to look big picture i'm a, I'm a systems analyst that's what i do i i I look at systems of people and go, okay, what, what is the big picture here? What are the commonalities? This is what I do. And I know I'm not the only person that's had this because when I tweeted about this, people, people started telling me stories about how they were blocked. And, and um, you know, it's, it's not just me. And this, um, this invention that is the internet that used properly, it's, it's an amazing empowerment tool but you know i start thinking if people in elite positions if people who are in power and i'm not saying that gaming is especially important i'm i'm dealing with it because it's not important uh, it's not that it's not important to some people as a form of stress release or escapism it's just is anybody going to die over a video game probably not okay um but 
when you deal with situations like citizen journalism in certain parts of the world or, um, you know, even somebody telling their own very unique story, maybe it's, you know, their, their, their cancer treatment or, um, uh, you know, they're moving from one place to another or anything like that. If they, if, if the technology is giving the, the elite power to shut out the voices of the little guys and gals, well, that's not the empowering tool that makes the internet so great. And I know that's really extrapolating and that's bordering on slippery slope, but that is the reason that people get so upset about mass shadow banning and block lists and things like that because they feel small and they feel like the internet, it's, it's various forms, various services gives them a voice. And so they feel very rattled. They, they feel a sense of insecurity when that's taken away from them and i get that and i get why uh why it upsets them it, it upsets me too um i'm a person who would much rather talk something out than resort to cutting someone off and there's you know that point if the other person won't talk you know then that's it there's no point in talking if the other person won't have a conversation there's no point in having a conversation but i'm not a person to block someone and i i guess it goes down to this idea of innocent until proven guilty these block lists are inherently guilty until proven innocent if you end up on that list and what's crazy to me is i mean when i was going through school i read all these stories like like I was big on dystopias except the handmaid's tale I couldn't get through that um but you know um brave new world and 1984 and the trial by Kafka I mean Kafka just Kafka I think if he were alive today he'd be a gamer he's just so so many of the themes we sort of deal with, you know, identity, collective guilt, all, all this stuff, um, uh, the nonsense of systems, um, being a, a small cog in a machine, like Kafka dealt with all that stuff. And, um, you know, and, and then things like um, the Scarlet Letter um, and even, even Alice in Wonderland to a point, but all these stories, um, stress the the importance the good of giving people a chance who are different and not succumbing to sort of um absolute security over uh, uh, you know relative freedom and you know all these all these things you know, all these stories, and I'm not the only one that's read these stories. These stories are known in the popular consciousness. Um, you know, the, the writing of, of Oscar Wilde is all about um, questioning decency. And I, I think, you know, he had personal reasons for doing so, but I don't think that those personal reasons make the points any less valid. Um, and it's, uh, you know, Bernard Shaw, Bertrand Russell, they're all dealing with the same stuff. And I know that anybody who's got a certain degree of education has encountered at least some of these, these literary works, if not all of them. But at some point in time, they became so scared in, in some way whether it's losing their job or being irrelevant or, you know, being afraid of, of being some sort of oppressor as, you know, white men are supposed to be because of, you know, the existence of patriarchal systems around the world. Uh, and that, that, you know, I'll, I'll say again for people, oh, patriarchy, tune out. There's certain trigger words that make people tune out. Um, patriarchies don't benefit every single man in a patriarchy they benefit powerful men and the importance of fighting these patriarchal systems is not so that you know all men understand what oppressive shitlords they are 
fighting patriarchal systems just means that, you know, a law involving a woman's reproductive health should not be determined by nine men without a single woman in the room. Why? Because they're creating a law that isn't going to affect a single person making that law. That's why it's important to identify and, and um, you know, evolve patriarchal systems or patriarchal elements of systems not so that every man on the damn planet can be affected like i'm sure that there are some people that think a feminist utopia would have women in charge but that's that's just not it that's just going to swap one set of problems for another and it's not going to happen anyway um but i that that was only i only put that in because i don't want people dismissing the entire entirety of my statement here because of that one thing they went nope and it, it kills me it frustrates me so badly when anybody says it's just pay gap stop listening it's a patriarchy stopped listening it that causes me stress just because it takes everything i have not to go you know what go away if that's if that's what the fact that they had that thought and then bothered to leave a comment about that thought instead of just stopping and going on continuing with their day. That's just resentment and that's just spite. And I have no interest in wasting any of my time on spiteful people. And um, that's why I decided to stop responding to YouTube comments for a while. I'm sorry, guys, but it, it's just been feeding... Um, I won't call them trolls because they'll get angry and I don't know that they are, but uh, it's been feeding some behaviors in the YouTube comments on this channel I don't want to feed. And um, I believe very strongly in people having some sort of feedback system and for now, I think comments are just sort of the best way of doing it because then people feel like they can have their say in the same place the video's on. And of, of course there's Twitter, but some people want to leave long form comments and that's fine. I'd rather them leave a comment on the video than do a twit longer uh, that I may miss and then it's just gone. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't want to disable comments, but that requires management. And the management is not for me. The management is for other people who come to engage in a, a moderate viewpoint and they don't want to have to deal with the hysterics that usually come with the internet. That's why people don't engage. That's why people don't engage in any system because they determine it's just not worth it. The negatives outweigh the positives and you can't blame a person or group from w not wanting to waste their time. And this is going to be sort of a theme that I'm going to be exploring somewhat this week um but i wanted to start personal because mondays are personal i'm thinking of alternating now uh different formats on mondays just because gotta get the numbers up um but um that's sort of the thought for today um i want people to keep talking i, I want people to be able to truly believe in something and and feel like they can um talk about what they like more than what they dislike i really think that there's there's an element of the human spirit that is fed by being able to talk about something someone really really enjoys instead of just nitpicking and complaining and finding fault with things because people who are constantly finding the one thing wrong with another person's argument well it's very likely they're fixated on the one thing wrong with them at any given time as well as opposed to the 99 things that are right and you can't live that way that's a sign of exceptionally low self-esteem and you know not saying it's a guarantee of self-esteem nitpicky you know out that nitpickers out there i'm saying it's a sign and the thing about people is when you get these signs, they're assigned to back off. And I'd be a complete asshole, I think, if I ignored the signs. But for the purposes of something like this, I'm not just a person. I'm not just here to be nice. I'm here to get thoughts out. And I'm here to engage and I'm here to challenge people and I'm here to entertain and make people think. So 
I will call some people on the fact that, hey, that's a very negative statement and you're only focusing on the negative. And I will say when I feel someone's coming across as angry and I will say when I feel someone's coming across as bitter sometimes, it's just that is part that is part of engaged dialogue saying, you know, the and and you know, if I was sitting across someone and it wasn't an entertainment forum, it would be, you know, for example, something that happened last week. Do you realize you're coming across as very angry right now? But when you're on stage as a comedian, you're going for that joke. You're going for that comment so that everybody else in the audience doesn't feel like you've suddenly shut them out to deal with this one heckler. So instead of, do you realize you're coming across as angry right now, which is making them the focus of my attention, you say something for the audience, which is, are you always this angry? Because that gives them a laugh. And that's the system involving some of those responses and people respond very, very badly, I think, because they don't necessarily understand that an individual commenter is not the center of the YouTube universe. And that's just, that's not an insult. That's just a fact. So something to think about as we go into this week, please, please engage with joy and not with anger. And, you know, if you're not interested in something, that's fine. But there's no need to be a jerk about things. And there's no need to beat a dead horse when, when, when you've had a few back and forths with someone and you're really not getting anywhere, just, just move on. You can't please all of the people all the time and you can't convince people of the rightness of your position if they're not ready. And all you're doing is, is wasting um, your time and your energy. So that's my thought for today. So we're going to close out, breathe in, and out, breathe in, and out.